This review is partly brought to you by Kaya Boutique, your source for everything Star Wars, Marvel, DC Comics, G.I. Joe, and much more. <music> Greetings Jedi Knights and Sith Lords, and welcome to Star Wars Artifacts. My name is Dominic, aka Lord Doom, and today we'll be reviewing the Boba Fett half-scale bust from Gentle Giant, as seen in the book of Boba Fett series. This half-scale bust is part of the Legends in Three Dimensions series from Diamond Select Toys. As for all the busts of this series, it is limited to an edition of 1,000 copies, with a few artist-proof pieces as well. This bust was originally sold for about 200 US dollars, or around 275 Canadian dollars. It is the company's second version of a Boba Fett bust, the first version being the one from The Empire Strikes Back. Click on the link in the upper left corner of this video if you want to see my review for this version. Enough talking, let's start the review. I will only briefly talk about the box since it is pretty much identical from one bust to another. On the front, we have a picture of the bust itself and the gold writing indicates Boba Fett half-scale resin bust. Both left and right sides of the box are identical and show very few details. They both display the Legends in 3 Dimensions series logo and the name of the character. The back side shows the Star Wars logo. In the middle, there is a small paragraph that goes like this. With his customized Mandalorian armor, deadly weaponry, and silent demeanor, Boba Fett was one of the most feared bounty hunters in the galaxy. A genetic clone of his father, bounty hunter Jango Fett, Boba learned combat and martial skills from a young age. Over the course of his career, which included contracts for the Empire and the criminal underworld, he became a legend. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and smash the like button to help me continue my work. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the links are available in the description below. As it is indicated on the box, the bust is made of resin. It is 10 inches high, 11 with the range finder, and the shoulder width is 10 inches. It has a depth of 7 inches. It weighs about 4.5 pounds and was designed by Joe Aldred and sculpted by Joe Mena. Boba Fett's helmet is very well sculpted. You will even see the dent on the top of his helmet, resulting from his first duel with Cad Bane. The weathering marks and the scratches correspond well to his repainted helmet from the series. Obviously, it was impossible to be 100% accurate. On the left side of his helmet, we can see 18 orange bars. The rangefinder really looks like the original and shows good weathering marks. In case you are wondering, it is impossible to move the rangefinder. Behind his helmet, we have a ventilation trap and more weathering marks. On his chest, we can see his green Mandalorian armor. The details are once more well reproduced. On the side of his heart, we can see the numbers that usually light up on the actual armor. On the opposite side, we can see the Mandalorian bravery patch that corresponds to the Aurea Lea Lee code. The pauldrons have also been nicely detailed. On the left one, we can see a Midazor skull. Above his pauldrons and around his neck, we can see the black tunic he received during his stay with a group of Tuscan warriors. The sculpting details give us great textures, and if you look closely at his shoulders, 
you will even see the stitching points. The black straps that link the front and back plates of his armor are also very well done. On his back, his jetpack looks terrific and, as the rest of the bust, has nice aging and weathering marks. The burgundy and blue accents are faithful to the look seen throughout the series. The base features an appearance that looks a lot like his throne. In the middle, we have a Rancor head. Just below, the name Boba Fett is written in Hutties. On the back, we have a little grill. The writings are repeated on each side of the base. Once again, I just love those kinds of details. Below the base, you will find the copyright, the name of the manufacturer, and the location where it was made. You will also see the number of the piece. In my case, I have an artist proof or AP version. For those of you wondering what is an artist proof piece, they serve as reference for artists to decide if some details need to be modified before mass production. A predetermined number of AP pieces are made and the number varies from one company to another. Some of them are kept in case a statue has a defect for replacement purposes. However, I do not know the quantity of artist-proof pieces there is for the Legends in the Three Dimension series. Each bust of the series is accompanied with a certificate of authenticity. On the certificate, we usually see once more the number of the piece. As for the Empire Strikes Back version, I am very impressed by the work of the artists behind this bust. The fabric textures and the weathering marks impress me each time I get my hands on a new piece. For my part, I'd like to expose it with the Tuscan Raider bust to recreate the atmosphere of the series. If you like the review of those type of statues, you will find the playlist at the end of this video. What do you think of this bust? Do you like the way it looks? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to share it on your social media. I'll see you next week for another review, and until then, May the Force be with you, always. Remember, the Force will be with you, always.